Okay, so identity. Um, now, when I was looking this up, um, identity was defined as who a person is, right? The qualities a person or group which makes them different from others. Um, now, we spend more time at work than we do sleeping, eating, resting, playing, or even with our families. Um, and kind of work for, for many of us, it has for me many times, has kind of been the defining aspect of our lives um, and therefore our identities. Um, but what happens when our whole identity becomes more about work than life? Um, now, Alex. Hello. Hello. I think I'm going to put Kasia on mute. Okay, there we go. Can everyone still hear me? Thumbs up? We're good. Awesome. Okay, so on an extreme level, um, people can become subject to something called role engulfment. Um, and it's when we lose all sense of ourselves except as we exist at work. Um, now, for those people, and I've come across this quite a lot working in change, because when there are periods of change, often it means that our identities, our sense of self are being threatened because something at work is changing and therefore something, something around our status, our team is being threatened. Um, now, often what happens when we're very, very attached or the majority of our identity is attached to work, when there are changes in our roles or our teams, uh, we, lose our, we lose our work, we're made redundant or retirement, um, it, can provoke this kind of severe identity crisis, a loss of purpose and questioning, who am I? What am I if I don't work? Um, and what am I gonna do if not this role in this company with these people? Um, and interestingly, I've seen a lot of that during this crisis, that even those people that are not necessarily being made redundant, especially those, you know, people on furlough, and, and people who've been made redundant, suddenly there's this lost sense of purpose and identity, but also so for some people who are now predominantly working at home and where their identities have been consumed by work and the people at work, it's, it's, because, it's creating this discomfort. Um, now, identifying closely with your career or being passionate about your work isn't, isn't a bad thing, right? This is not necessarily a bad thing but basing your entire sense of self on work can make you vulnerable to some really painful experiences, especially when we've tied our entire sense of worth with our work or occupation or our job, right? And we become reliant on the recognition and the appraisal um, from these places. Now, when we don't get this recognition and appraisal, we can, have a, a low sense of self-worth and low confidence. So when we attach too much of our identity and our need for ap approval, appraisal and um, recognition on our work, this becomes a real problem because we attach our whole sense of self-worth on it, right? And in these situations, we can suffer a lot of anxiety, depression and despair. Now, interestingly, the research shows that it is highly prevalent in high achievers. Um, in environments of intense competitiveness and in cultures of overwork. I think that's probably the majority of our environments, yeah? Um, it creates a perfect storm for what, what this is, role engulfment, where it's completely kind of uh, our sense of identity is totally immersed in work. Um, and it's usually at risk of leading to burnout or other kind of mental health issues. So sometimes we don't realize how deeply entrenched we've become in work because it consumes so much of our time and energy um, until we're forced to change and we go into kind of like a crisis because we've potentially neglected some of the other parts of our, our potential. Um, now this can happen in periods of crisis. It can happen with big life events. It happened to me when my mum passed away. You know, things like that really make you reassess things, things like a global pandemic, things like a recession, things like redundancy, they tend to make us really, they kind of like jolting. Um, so we, 
we what we're all going to do is we can't usually i do this exercise um all standing up we're going to do it we're going to definitely do it okay so usually i do this exercise where everyone stands up and everyone kind of takes a step forward but instead we're going to tally so if everyone's got a piece of paper or um, a phone or something where you can just like tally use a tally um so i've got a few statements and you do not have to share your results if you don't want to but if you, if it if it forms part of the discussion later you can but the idea is that there are a, a series of statements and i want you to if this in any way relates to you just mark it down okay so just a, a line for every for everyone so i'll read out the numbers okay so number one if you think about your job outside of the office then give yourself a mark Okay, two, if you would describe your mind frequently consumed with work-related thoughts, give yourself a mark. Three, if it's difficult to participate in conversation with others that are not about your work, or if you find that the conversation just seems to gravitate towards work naturally, then give yourself a mark. Four, if your description of yourself is wholly or for the most part tied up in your job, title or company, then give yourself a mark. Five, if you're likely to quickly, quite quickly tell people you've just met about your job, give yourself a mark. Six, if there are no other ways that you would describe yourself, give yourself a mark. If you spend seven, if you spend most of your time at or doing work, give yourself a mark. Eight, if anyone has ever complained to you that you were in the office too much or working too much, give yourself a mark. Nine, if you do not have hobbies outside of work that do not directly involve your work related skills or abilities, if you do not have any other hobbies, give yourself a mark. And 10, if you feel worried that of the thought that you could no longer continue in your profession, if you got if you were worried and you know to the point of desperation almost of the thought that you could no longer continue in your profession and give yourself a mark okay so with this with this assessment in mind and we can talk about it in a moment but if if you're a, a seven or above then there may be some some potential issues here in terms of work consuming too much of 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 your 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 identity it consuming it being abundantly too much uh, on the other side okay so i'm going to talk around one way that our sense of identity is created through our values and our beliefs okay and what we can do to ensure we're taking a more well-rounded view of ourselves and our lives so our identities are partially created by our values and our beliefs OK, so the majority of our values and our beliefs are constructed as a result of our external environment, right? Our childhood, our education, family, friendship groups, life experiences. The media is a massive one. What we watch on television, Instagram, all of that. So our brain soaks up all of this information from all of these sources and some of it sits way back in our subconscious. OK, without us even knowing it. Now it plays a big role even the information that we don't know that we're soaking up it is like a sponge even those things that we don't necessarily know it's soaking up they play a big role in the decisions we make every day what we think about ourselves our behavior our identities and we use that information so our values and our beliefs to make decisions every day about our lives now the problem occurs when we don't delve in there every now and then and just start to challenge some of that stuff because a lot of it is inherited a lot of it we've absorbed from various places um so if we don't if we don't challenge it there's likely to be a whole heap of stuff in there 
that does not serve us anymore, okay, and only works to limit us. And some of it isn't even our own. So I was, um, I was coaching a woman, I've, I've told this story before as part of one of our mini courses, but I was coaching a woman whose family are very, very religious and through her culture, her family, the type of media they consumed, she grew up with the, the thought process and the mentality that women were obedient. Now, this was absolutely fine in her home context. Um, it was about respect. That was a very, very important part of who she was at home. But in her work world, she was still bringing that belief and that value that women were obedient in the office, which was stopping her, which she recognized in herself, was stopping her in all sorts of ways um, in terms of putting herself forward at work, having a voice, um, being known for something and boasting about her achievements. Um, now, this she didn't even realize that this belief was there driving some of that behavior that she, that she recognized was a barrier for her. Um, and that's why she was getting coaching initially because she just couldn't see why she wasn't progressing. And this, or one of the reasons she could see was her, her not putting herself forward because of this belief. Now, what we had to do is we had to, we had to separate those identities. And we have various identities in different contexts, and that's absolutely okay. Um, but we had to separate the identity that she saw appropriate as or at home and the identity that she wanted to portray at work. Um, so just because it's, you know, you think something doesn't make it true, right? We can choose, we have the ability to choose whether we buy into something in there or not, okay? So we need to start questioning, where did this thought come from? Where did this belief, you know, come from? Um, do, do I even agree with it? Is it mine or is it my mum's or my dad's? Do, do I want that? Um, and how is it influencing me? Is it influencing me in a good way? Is it serving me? Great, I'll keep that one. If it's not, what belief do I need to replace that with? Okay, it's dangerous if we leave them there because our thoughts directly impact our actions, our actions and our results. Now, I would love to get into limiting beliefs and negative self-talk and that's, but that's a whole nother um, coffee chat. Um, but basically, if you tell yourself you can't do something, you are practically giving your brain instructions and you're telling it not to do it. So it's just the way the brain is wired. Um, so how can we go about building a more balanced and robust identity in line with who we are? Knowing what you care about in life and doing yourself a favor letting those priorities guide you okay so instead of allowing others to dictate where your time and energy goes and i get it we all have corporate roles there is only so much control we have but giving up your power by saying that you have zero control over your time and energy you are you are giving up you're giving that up that to other people in your circumstances to control it for you okay if you don't decide what is important to you and make conscious decisions every day to focus on those things then you're giving up your life up to other people, your circumstances and distractions to decide that for you. Um, so this is what I call finding your North Star. Your North Star is your intuitive compass, okay? It's knowing your purpose, your passions, your why, and it's made up of your strengths and your natural talents and the things that really light you the fuck up, okay? This is about what's important to you, not all the bullshit conditioning you've been told all of your life, okay? This is about going beyond who your organization has defined you as or the title they've given you because you are made up of so much more than that. Your identity is made up of so much more than that. And to think of ourselves in this really, really limited way only causes us to feel lost, stressed, confused, and resist when things change and we're unable to fulfill that role or that very specific identity anymore. So in order to explore some of your North Star, we need to unravel those labels. We need to be, begin to kind of unpack that box that you've been confined within quite comfortably, okay, because it's safe in that box, um, and start digging into what is most important to you. Not your boss, not social media, not your parents. Um, now, we can do this in several ways. OK, and this is about ensuring that we have uh, we're, we're, we're not just attaching our identities to our work. This is what this work is doing. This is what finding our North Star is about. 
Um, so we can do this in some really, really quick ways, um, is identifying your personal values. Um, now, everyone who works with me will have gone through this process of understanding what your personal values are. They are a set of words that encapsulate what is most important to you. The aim is always to get down to three that are the most integral. And what I do with my clients is we, when they're in those periods of decision paralysis, where they just don't know what to do, we always go back to these. What's the most important thing? Um, so my, I know, you know, when this whole pandemic occurred, pandemic occurred, my values of courage, connection, and curiosity and bringing energy, that was the deciding factor in terms of a lot of the work that I did, pulling this community together, doing these Monday chats. It was, how can I show courage in the face of this situation? How can I support connection and bring people together in this time? Um, how can I support people to move from fear to curiosity about all of this unknown and all this uncertainty? And how can I bring energy to this and, and kind of support people to, to kind of harness their energy in, in doing what they need to do to get them forward? So it's always, every time I'm making a decision, I'm basing it back on my values. Um, challenge the beliefs that you hold. Okay. You can do this by getting a coach. You can coach yourself. You can do this through journaling. These are some of the things that we teach self coaching as part of our programs, um, and how you can kind of do that yourself. Um, but just challenge, simply challenging some of those thoughts, some of those limiting beliefs, even some of the ones that are not necessarily overtly negative. Where did it come from? Where did that thought come from? Where did that emotion come from? Just kind of starting to question with compassion, not criticizing. Um, do a wheel of life. My clients love this. Um, this is probably one of the, 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 the favorites. Um, this is about you identifying on this wheel the most important parts of your life. OK, you're breaking it down to eight segments. And then what we do as part of the coaching process is we focus on three. That's not to say that we neglect the rest of them, but we kind of channel our energy into the three that are most important right now. And the, these priorities will change as you grow and develop and, and move on to do different things. But the feedback that I've had about the Wheel of Life and from personal experience, it's sort of, especially in times like this, um, and maybe people on this call who have done it will be able to kind of illustrate if you haven't done it already. Um, but it, it, it starts to get your mind thinking about the other areas of your life that are really, really important and that there is more to be thankful and grateful for, despite whatever's going on. Um, and the final one is diversifying your activities and your relationships outside of work. This is a really, really important element of making sure that your identity isn't too attached on a job title, on a job, because the world is only going to increase in pace um, and scope of change. Things are only going to continue to get uncertain. Now that means job security, it, it, it doesn't exist in the way that it has for our parents, for our grandparents. Um, and so to attach ourselves so deeply on our positions, on our work, is a really, really dangerous place to be in terms of our mental health. Um, so building, this is all about building our change capability, building our ability to adapt quickly, um, is taking ourselves and our skills outside of just the confines of this tiny title or box that we've been put in and see ourselves as, 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 as more vast, as, as more broad than that. So by understanding our values, our preferences, our beliefs, we can start making choices every day that are more aligned with who we really are. Um, and choosing a career path or continuing to choose a career path that is, is congruent with them. Um, now, the theory being, and this is a lot of what coaching um, and uh, kind of career counselling is based on, is that it by being more congruent with these things, by being more intuitive um, in terms of our values and understanding ourselves a bit more, it will bring us far more professional, that feeling of professional success, personal contentment and well-being that we're all essentially striving for. So if you want any of the tools on guiding on how to get your values, um, we and the Wheel of Life, I've got some free workbooks that um, I have available. So if that is of interest to you, um, do let me know um, and I can send those straight to you. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little chat about 
how people have related 